Arts in South Africa continue to face uh, major hurdles. Institutions like the Gauteng Opera and Dance Umbrella recently shut down because of a lack of funding. And many artists feel they're unable to follow their passions because of the lack of support, not only from government, from us as well as audiences. Let's explore the topic now. I'm joined in studio by visual artist Nandi Dambo as well as film filmmaker and activist Bev Didzie. A refreshing Sunday morning to you ladies. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us. Thank you so much. Thank it's, a, it's so. a pleasure. So we invited the Department of Arts and Culture. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it. Mm. Um, and, and the question really is, what is the mandate of uh, that department? Uh, the website offering some, some, some help. The vision to a uh, creative and inclusive nation. The mission, develop, preserve, protect, and promote arts and culture and heritage. Bev, let me start with that. Do we get a sense that we have um, you know, development, promotion, and preservation of arts and culture in South Africa? Well, there is, yes, because it is there and the, there's a ministry and there's a department that is arts and culture and they do do some work. But generally the sense is that there isn't much of a commitment to the arts. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of talk shop, there's a lot of talking, um, there's a lot of papers that get written, there's a lot of summits that happen, there's a lot of things. Mm -hmm you know, um, and, and investigations into this, that, and the other. But in reality is that artists struggle. Mm. Artists are starving across the board. It doesn't matter what kind of artist you are. Um, just to be able to get government support in this country is, is, is pulling teeth. Mm. Um, and it is unfortunate because without the arts, which contribute not just to the GDP of the country, but to actually a well-being of a people mm. as being a reflection of the people, mm. it is quite sad. Mm. Nandi, let's talk about the kind of work uh, that you do. You're an amazing sculptor uh, as well. Do you get uh, a sense that it's not just about government, but it was about us as, as, as a people as well in terms of, of consuming the work that artists make? Are we supporting you enough? Um, you know, I think um, this is a bit of a difficult answer, you know, uh, because the reality is that, uh, you know, I've been working, I think, for over 15 years now. And the large portion of people who were collecting my work were usually American or European people mm -hmm. when I first started. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that within the context of South Africa, we're in a situation where um, education around art has um, only kind of started opening up in the last five years, I think. Art as an investment as well and how people view it has only started to shift within the last five years as well. Um, and so we're in a situation where we're still catching up in a way to um, the rest of the world. And so um, my reality has just been that I haven't had a lot of South African collectors, which on one hand has been quite sad for me because seeing my work leave the country all the time has been quite, um, I think, quite complex mm. and, and unnerving in a way mm. because, you know, when I was growing up as a young student, um, it was very difficult to be able to see the work of either the people you were learning about um, or, you know, artists that were just a little bit older than you mm. within the context of the country. Mm. And then we had the situation where um, the Zeitz Mocha opened in Cape Town and they have a large collection of my work but the complexity of that is that the man who collected the work is a German mm. and he then chose to bring the collection back and, and uh, kind of house it in Cape Town. And um, I think there was a lot of um, aggression towards that because wow. he's not a person from South Africa so there was an issue around how he was collecting work how he viewed Africa how he <laughs> was you see so there's quite a complex um, political issue mm. around how people understand their place within the arts mm. um, so there was a lot of kind of negative backlash around the fact that he was a German person who had come and basically I suppose people saw it as another form of colonialism are we then collecting also are but we then doing the what the uh, what everyone coming outside yes. and seeing so this beauty is doing I think that's the the larger problem that unfortunately a lot of people within the context of South Africa who have the large amounts of money to be able to collect on that scale are thinking around other things to buy. Mm. So um, their thoughts around investment or um, their thoughts around culture 
um, are kind of Ferraris mm. and Gucci yeah. bags. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, and the commitment is not just for me. The commitment is not just you know from the 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 general public mm. who are consumers of what we do. Mm. Generally speaking, mm. I mean the TV is on. The people who are making the TV to be on are artists. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. the music, the radio is on. You, right. You're reading. These, this is art mm -hmm. that is being consumed generally. Mm -hmm. But the people who have the money, who are the philanthropists, who do other things with their money except for the Ferraris, they're still not even considering this as part of an yes. investment. Yes. So there is no investment in the country, mm. and we're finding that a lot of artists rather leave, mm. which is also the other sad thing, because then you've got like a capital that is mm. actually leaving the country in a droves. Mm. Yes. A cultural mm. capital is actually leaving, which yeah. is depreciating. There's something in the Bible about an art, um, a prophet not being uh, appreciated in his own country. I guess in this aspect, it's an artist not being mm. appreciated, appreciated. Uh, in their own country. How do we educate, though, uh, and, and say, this is what the arts is about. This is the kind of investment that you can make. I think the general sense begins, for me anyway, with everything, with school, with, with media. We're having this interview right now. Um, it all begins with education. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, if the general sense around uh, people is that Oh, you artists just want to have an easy life. Mm. And of course, media portrays artists as people who just go to parties, that live, easy a, job. Live, live, nice a, life. live a nice life. You know, and nobody shows the, the trauma, the, the starvation, everything else that goes into producing the piece of work that you mm. ultimately produce mm. that then gets consumed. Mm. And so we also show ourselves coming to media. We also show ourselves coming to the awards. You have like, all your images are of the good life, but actually nobody talks about the diff the ninety percent of the time. Mm -hmm. Your creative process is not necessarily that mm -hmm. much fun, mm -hmm. um, and so we're not taken seriously as people who are practitioners who are actually contributing more than just a there's a party song, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. there is more of a contribution mm -hmm. than than just that. Nandi, do you have a story to share with us in terms of perhaps the creative process in trying to create something, but? resources was a problem but uh, mm -hmm. something you know was just preventing it from happening but mm -hmm. you did it anyway um, you know I guess <laughs> there's so many stories yeah. um, throughout my career um, and I suppose you know I've been really lucky in that I've had a few people who have kind of come to my rescue you know um, there is a man Dr. Peter Matseke who he actually owns a chain of clinics and I've known him for a very long time and he's helped me with kind of being a patron at certain times of my career so that's been really amazing um, but at this point in time I was able to um, purchase a house but I need to build a studio in the backyard and I mean building is expensive yeah. architects are expensive so you know the the whole idea of one being able to barter a service with an architect for instance I was able to barter wow. for an artwork, Take a an artwork for school, a drawing yes. <laughs> but then there's the real kind of concrete issues around bricks and mortar that need to um, mm -hmm. sort of become a reality mm -hmm. and you can't really mm -hmm. barter an artwork mm -hmm. with some bricks mm -hmm. you know right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Doesn't make my sister <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, So at this time, I suppose that's my biggest struggle, yeah. trying to figure out how to um, mm -hmm. create the space for my creation in a way that's uh, exactly what I want, but mm. also cost effective, mm. you know. So yeah. those are the things that people don't necessarily, as Bev was saying, understand or see as part of your struggle. Mm. You know, they see the finished artwork, they see yeah. um, how you maybe present yourself in the world, mm. um, and the, the sort of background story around how things happen mm. isn't necessarily um, yeah. out there. You know, it's heartbreaking because continentally this is who we are, right? Storytelling mm. is a part of us. Uh, making artifacts is a part of us. Bev, we're having this conversation in South Africa, but there are artists in Zimbabwe, there are artists mm. in Uganda who are facing mm. so much backlash mm. just because of the political environment mm -hmm. and not only because people don't consume mm -hmm. uh, the arts. What can we do as a continent in terms of us finding solutions? You know, uh, you were talking, Nandi, about people consuming your work from outside the country, mm -hmm. a German person facing backlash because they bought your mm -hmm. art. We should be grateful that at least in South Africa. <laughs> right? He didn't right. take it back home. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we do as, as, as a people to sort of promote this and appreciate it a little bit more? Um, you know, Nigeria right now has a huge industry. I mean, Nollywood mm -hmm. is, people are supporting their own mm -hmm. people's work. Mm -hmm. um, 
until recently it was very bad quality but to this day we still have South Africans that are yeah. watching Nollywood films 100%. because they are so much fun 100%. right um, I remember when Muruti Watsozi came yeah. out with Sinyaka yeah. at one point and it was a Chico <laughs> Twala production yeah. how it was being bootlegged left right and center mm. everyone had a DVD mm. and then there's an attempt TV wise to do something similar mm. with these different channels that are happening mm. but they're falling flat because they're not actually getting the ingredients right mm. but you're talking music as well where somebody else was going off about how you know um, the Nigerian Nigerian music industry is booming. People are actually making a proper living off of being mm. musicians and young ones are being taken mm. care of. And this is not also just coming from government, is how they nurtured mm. and they keep nurturing as themselves and each exactly. other as people. And it is really about who we are and how much we love each other mm. and love ourselves. Because mm. we are not even able to consume our own work and appreciate our own work. Remember when 90% and it's got its own controversies yeah. mm. right there, mm. just in terms of how it rolled out. You mm. can't just do that and expect the next day things will be fine, right? But that in increments starting from 1994 should have been the very first thing if you think about mm. the fact that in actual fact it is the musicians and the artists of this country that went and liberated yeah. this mm. country just in terms mm. of, you know, making sure that the whole world knows what is going on, right? Exactly. But a lot of those same artists are still dying poppers because why? There's very little commitment from this government to actually even recognize that all these people are still there. Mm. But I think you know? for me the, the issue now that you're speaking on Nigeria is, you know, I guess in my life I've been really lucky to be able to travel within Africa to kind of, I guess, see how other people on mm. the continent live. Mm -hmm. And I think our issue as South Africa is that we're still divided. You know, we mm -hmm. have this That's idea right. of a rainbow nation mm -hmm. and we're preaching all this love and mm -hmm. happiness, but actually within how we really mm -hmm. live, the divisions are still very mm -hmm. clear and still very um, kind of active, you know. And I think within these countries, whether it be Nigeria or Ghana mm -hmm. or Senegal, um, there's a little bit more cohesion uh, mm -hmm. because I think people, I guess, of course, they have their tribal separations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe religious separations as well. But there's something that they um, really enjoy about being Nigerian yeah. or Ghanaian, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And the, the interesting thing is that they used to look at us with yeah. some kind of envy at some point around like, oh, South Africa, this wonderful place mm -hmm. that has got such huge potential. And then how it kind of all turned around yeah. shifted their percep perception as exactly. well, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there's something that we need to do as a country, as a people, um, to really think around this idea of cohesion and mm. how it really works. Mm. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, Someone asked a very important question. Are we a country or are we a nation? Mm. There's a difference between, between those two. That. You just live in a country and you can take your bags and go yeah. anywhere. But in, yeah. a, in terms of a nation, yeah. you have a sense of identity. Yes. And I guess that's what you're talking about. Yes. When you meet a Nigerian person, you yeah. know oh, they're Nigerian. Yes. Because there's, there's a sense of pride, of pride exactly. in who they are. Mm -hmm. What contribution can the arts play in creating that cohesion or creating that sense of pride? I think we're doing it. To a very large degree, I think we're doing it. Um, I think our music is being consumed a little bit more um, overseas. I think there's some of the films that we make are, are, are kind of at least reaching out to the rest of the world. Um, there, there is a sense that there's something we're just there and I think this is th this just there has been happening for me anyway for the past 10 years where ah. where you realize that we, mm, you know there was one time when an international film festival will have uh, seven 10, 15 filmmakers mm. who are there to kind of pitch and, and shop their work and you think, ah, oh, we're about to break out, mm. you know, because I think mm. breaking out has been kind of a key word mm. for mm. a long time now. Mm. And then something backtracks somewhere. Um, and and I, wh whatever that is, is the problem. Mm. And I, I can't avoid saying there is very little checks and balances in terms of where the funds that are allocated actually go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And if they actually reach their intended mm -hmm. recipients, and I think for me that is the biggest issue, is mm -hmm. that even if someone says, but there are funds, mm -hmm. you know, um, 10 billion a year for the next three years mm -hmm. has been allocated to the arts mm -hmm. generally in the country. But do they reach the intended recipients? 100%. Because if they reach the intended recipients, the two films that I've been making for the past five years would probably be made now. And we're starving for local you know, content. We want to go they, to they would be there. cinema I have, and I have, We've got films, we've got books, yeah. we've got sculptures, mm. we've got music, mm. we've got fine arts, we've got mm. all kinds that are waiting. Mm. But 
people are not getting the funding or the support, and it's not just financial the support. Yeah. It's the government itself booking these artists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the government itself saying, oh, for this installation, I'm going to use your work, and I would like this music and that and the other. There's no commitment. We could talk about this the whole day. I'm Absolutely. so honored to have been sitting Thank here you. and talking to you guys. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much uh, ladies, for joining us. We